In this video, I'm going to show you how to access alternates in fonts, specifically in Adobe Illustrator, and I'll show you a couple other programs as well. So if you're purchasing a font, you might see things like this. Uh, this is my font, Lemon Squeezy. It has Roman numerals. It has some stylistic alternates and ligatures, optional informs, and optional descenders. So how do you actually use those? Here's an example of them in action. So you can see where the J and the Y, we've used a slightly different letter just to give it a more customized feel. So these are called stylistic alternates. There are some things that are coded into the font to use every single time. So for instance, if you type in a T, it looks like this, but if you type in two Ts, it actually changes to a ligature. That is a contextual ligature based on what you type. It's not a stylistic alternate or stylistic ligature that you use uh, subjectively. That's something that happens every single time you type two Ts. We also might have one for a TH, for instance. That's something that's going to happen every time you type those letters, it's automatically coded into the font. But then you're also going to have stylistic alternates such as this J and Y that aren't going to happen automatically, but you can use them if you want. So how do you access those? One easy way is just by highlighting the letter that you want to change, and then you'll see some of the alternates pop up right here. If you click this little button, then it will open your glyphs panel and show you either the entire font or the alternates for the current selection. So if there's just more than will show up right here, more than five-ish, then you can click that and you can see all of them. And then you can just click on them and it will change what you're working with. You can also always just use this glyph panel to access them. So in window, you can go all the way down to type and just click glyphs. And again, you can do alternates for current selection. So that will show you the alternates for anything you have selected here, uh, but it, you can also change it to the entire font. So if you just want to look through them or you're curious what's offered here and some fonts, for instance, this one Sapphire script, which is another one that I designed, um, will have some things like little words. We have to and we have from. Um, we have and, and we have four. So if your font has icons, symbols, things like that, you might need to use the entire font option in the glyphs panel to access those because they're not gonna come up as an alternate for anything that you're necessarily using here. Um, ours is coded so that the Roman numerals come up as alternates for the numbers. That's not exactly how everyone codes their Roman numerals. So if you can't find something that's shown in the listing images, then go into glyphs entire font and you'll be able to access it there. Now, some fonts also have little swashes on the end that work for all of the letters. So every lowercase letter, they're almost always on lowercase letters only. It's hard to find fonts where they have them on the uppercase letters. So that's why I've made these all lowercase. So you can go in and individually change all of these um, to have matching swashes. So every single letter is gonna have that exact same swash on the beginning and on the end, so you can make it match, which is really nice. Um, these are technically called stylistic sets, so depending on the font, they might be coded a little differently. Um, so if you go into your open type panel, which again, if you go into window <laughs> and go down to type, you'll see your open type panel there. Um, and then your find your stylistic sets over here on the right. And if you click on, for instance, set one, you'll see that every single letter, I'll just do a little enter between, I'll do an enter between these. Um, every single letter now has that left swash on it because I selected the stylistic set number one. If I were to select the stylistic set number two, every letter would have that right hand swash on it. And so it, for this particular font, you could go in and just select whichever ones you want and put in stylistic set two and that would change them all to that ending swash or stylistic set one would change them all to that beginning swash. Some fonts, however, are coded so that this can work automatically. This is a font called Lona Light uh, that my friend Nicolette designed. It is a really wonderful font and it's coded for the ability to add those swashes all at once. So if you turn on stylistic set one, for instance, you get those beginning and ending swashes if you turn on stylistic set two, you're gonna get a longer swash. 
So all of these are kind of set up to do different things for you, depending on exactly what you want to do. It's not affecting every single letter, but it's coded. So it's automatically going to affect just like the ending or beginning letters. So all of these are absolutely beautiful. I love to look for something like this in a font. It's kind of rare and those fonts might cost a little bit extra, but you can see how much time that's going to save you versus going in and having to change um, every single one to that beginning option. There are of course some ways you can write scripts and things to do these things for you, or you could set up the text boxes a little bit different, uh, but that's gonna take a lot more extra work. So I love when those things are done for you in the font. So just as a quick walkthrough, you can use that glyphs panel, which is in type and then glyphs to see the entire font or the alternates for anything that you've currently selected here. Uh, you can also just select something and most of the alternates will come up right here, depending on how many there are in a particular font. Stylistic sets are going to typically have more cohesive options. That's not always the case, but if you're seeing that every letter kind of has that ending swash or beginning swash, for instance, then it's probably all going to be in the same stylistic set. And then some fonts are coded such that you can access those through the stylistic sets in a more comprehensive way. I mentioned we will cover a couple other programs. So if you're looking at any other Adobe programs, then you'll go into window and either glyphs will be on here or you'll go to type and then glyphs. So that glyphs panel is going to look pretty much the same in any Adobe program. And then if you want to use these in Microsoft Word or a different type of program, it's just a little bit more difficult. Uh, if you're on a PC, you're gonna search your character map. Within your character map, you'll want to select your font. So I'll select my font Lemon Squeezy that I showed you at the beginning. This will show you the entire font here, um, all of the different characters, so whichever alternates that you're trying to use. This is something I often use if I'm trying to find the language support, the letters with the language diacritics, etc. And you can just click copy and then whenever you go into Word or wherever, you'll paste that particular glyph that you copied from character map. Um, the same thing on Mac is called font book. So you'll wanna just kind of keep this up if you're working in a program that doesn't have its own glyphs panel or ability to find uh, some of those options. And if you wanna find some of those fun alternates, you might have to look in a different place. Um, this character map is gonna have every single language and character that's ever existed and not every font has all of those characters. As uh, so you can see, we have our basic language support up here, uh, but we're not seeing some of those like stylistic options. So if you go into um, grouping by Unicode subrange, it's going to give you a bunch of different options. So if you're looking for like the currency options, general punctuation, and then a lot of those stylistic alternates are going to be in the private use character. It's the PUA section of the coding. So here is where you'll see um, like the alternates for all the different Ds, um, the alternates for all the different Ks and Ls and things like that, as well as your ligatures for like double T, double S, etc. Um, this font has like 27 different <laughs> T options. So you'll see a whole section of those here. And again, in order to use them, you would just click on the one you want and you can click copy and you can click on uh, multiple ones if you want to copy a bunch at a time to use and you'll copy all of them at once. So it's a little bit more difficult if you're working in Adobe programs, then you can use that glyphs panel and it's gonna show you the entire font and all of the different alternates that you need will be right here and super easy to use just by clicking on them and inserting them directly into your text box. I hope this helped you in accessing all your alternates. Um, the fonts that I use in this particular tutorial are my font, Sapphire Script. I also showed you my other font, Lemon Squeezy, up in here. These are available on Creative Market. This one is called Melanie, also available on Creative Market. And this one is called Blown Out Light. And I'll put a link to those all in the description of this video. I hope this video helped you access all the glyphs, swashes, and alternates that you need in your fonts. All the fonts mentioned in this video, I'm gonna go through, this is Lemon Squeezy and this is Sapphire Script, both of which I designed. They're available in my shop on Creative Market, which I will link to. This one is called Melanie Script. You can also get that on Creative Market as well. And then Lona Light, I'll link to all four of these in the description of this video if you want to try any of them out. They're some of my absolute favorite fonts to use for things like wedding invitations, and if you're interested in learning more about imitation design, please stick around because that is what my channel is all about. 
Thank you.